Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Welcome to the last show of the week. I hope you're good. It's Friday, Friday vibes. We're going to get into this. Um, so first thing I need to do as soon as you come on is please do just like. So click the blue button if you're watching on Facebook and please do drop a comment, do engage, do let me know what you think of the um, show and, and the subject, etc. Um, let me know where you are, what's going on. Um, also, uh, if you're on a podcast and listening to this on audio, please do make sure you leave a review at the end for me. I massively appreciate that. Tell somebody about the podcast, share the the feed let's get it out there um hopefully this can help some people before we get into talking about dads in business and giving you some tips and guidance for those guys that are running their own businesses entrepreneurs um <clears throat> and have children and trying to get the balance in place um before we do that i'm going to talk to you very very quickly about an event that's going on in april the first weekend of April and the second weekend of April, I'm doing a Train Like a Marine experience. And that is going to run from uh, the Friday evening at nine o'clock in the evening right through to six o'clock the following Saturday. It's going to be an amazing event. The event is to get the very best out of you, to draw the best out of you through physical exercise. But I'm going to be pushing you mentally and I'm going to be showing you just what you have in the tank. And relate, and that's going to be very relatable to everyday life. Okay, so there are going to be situations where you feel tired and a little bit fatigued, but I want you to show you how you can move further along with your own mental well-being and po progress, and show you what grit that you've got going on in there. I want to really, I want you to reach your full potential, and I'm going to be putting on these experiences to for you to do that. Okay, it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be action-packed. Um, and uh, we'll be topping it off with a, a mini spa, <laughs> as some of the guys uh, take the mic. On the feed somewhere, there's a link. It says Train Like a Marine. Check it out. There's a few places left. I'd love to see you there. We're going to do a little bit of seminar in as well down there, doing a little bit of talking about planning for the second quarter, issues that we're going through and struggling to get through, and um, it's going to be very beneficial in developing, uh, development. So listen, get yourself on there and check it out. Okay, let's get into this. So... I'm going to do a quick, um, maybe six tips about dealing with being an entrepreneur dad, uh, a dad that runs his own business. Now, trying to get the balance is super difficult, right? We um, want to be ever present for our children, but we also want to grow in business so that we can um, if, if, um, essentially like bring in more money to make sure that your family have a better life to make sure that you have a roof above your head, to make sure that you can pay for food and holidays. And, you know, when you work for yourself, it's, it can be a stress. It can be, um, it can be self, a lot of self-pressure, a lot of overwhelm, a lot of hours. Um, and those sort of things um, really go against everything that you're trying to, um, uh, <laughs> everything what you're trying to achieve, right? As in being a father. You want to be there, you want to see them growing up, but yet you're being drawn to work all of the time. So um, it's been a long six years for me in entrepreneurial, uh, in, in an entrepreneurial sense. And um, I just want to give a couple of tips based on what I feel um, could help you, okay, and what I've reflected on. Just very quickly, you know, I'm, over the last six years, I, I run two businesses. I run the Dad's Coach um, the dad coach brand. I look after all my guys in the brotherhood. We've just introduced the brotherhood mastermind. So that's a higher level of thinking and acting in terms of um, uh, development and performance in life and business and, and relationships. And then we run our foundation group, which is really focused on just getting people up to a good foundation level. I run an offline boot camp, We've got around 150 members in both. So I look after around 300 people, five staff. Um, and that's ever growing. So I've got to make sure that I um, am and going through some of these tips and understanding that time with my children is very, very important. OK, so tip number one, understand that money isn't the driver. OK, so the key here is that when you realise that. It's not all about the money and when you're in business, obviously, when you start, it has to be because you have to earn the money. But realising that um, you don't have to be doing 18, 19, 20 hours a day, okay, trying to bring in the money, okay, 
it makes you realize that there are other things in life. So in the past, in many years ago, when I very first started, I, you know, I got lost about what my purpose was in running a business. I started a business because I wanted to help people out. I wanted to make a difference in their life. Okay, and I got so consumed into it and I got real deep into it. Um, and it's not that I am, I'm not today. I'm just a lot more structured and aware of my uh, surroundings today. But to, uh, what happened is that I suddenly started thinking, I was money driven, you know, probably four or five years ago. And because I was so money driven, nothing was ever good enough. It doesn't, didn't matter how much money I earned. Nothing was ever good enough. Just kept on grafting away, grafting away, missing the opportunity to put the kids down, missing the opportunity to connect with the children. Um, and I've become almost obsessed with the fact that we were trying to build this like um, business in my local town. You know, competition was rife. I had to build up on my game. I felt my other my priorities were just all in the wrong place. And I think as an entrepreneur dad or a dad entrepreneur, <laughs> you we get we lose that we lose that focus of you know what's important what is our purpose and that is essentially our children okay so understanding and getting the mindset right with the balance when it comes to business is is key because you can slip down that slippery slope down the rabbit hole of driving for money nothing's ever good enough you want more 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 and you end up and you end up um forgetting the most important things at home waiting for you. Do you remember the people that you said you wanted to work for yourself for so that you had your own time? But that's, you know, that is one of my key things now. My, my currency is time to watch my little lady grow up, to watch my teenagers grow up. That is my time. Once they've all gone, I, then I can throw everything in. You know, all I'm doing here is building the foundations for the next seven years. And then guess what? In seven years, we're going to we could be, I'm just going to throw everything in. Because I can, because I don't have to worry about missing out on anything. Um, okay, this is a really good tip. So <clears throat> something I used to do when I was in business was just never... I used to think by doing a task, okay, I, I was going to move forwards massively. Okay, couldn't let that task go. So what that meant is that I would be on my, um, I would be on my laptop, okay, sitting here and just going, I'll just do that one more job. I just do that one more job. Okay, nothing is going to change in the 24 hour period. Nothing that you are doing or nothing that I am doing here is going to change your lives in 24 hours. It's not gonna suddenly make the mortgage go away. It's not suddenly gonna make all your car payments or credit card payments go away. Okay, so have a cut off period. And that cut off period has to be adhered to and it has to be matched because as soon as you go past that, you're then eating into your personal time. You thinking that you are going to achieve something like a much higher level by just sticking on the computer is wrong. Okay, you are not going to achieve anything by working past that cutoff time. Okay, your business is not going to grow by an epic amount. Okay, you've got to have your cutoff points. The cutoff points allows you to then go into personal space and actually have personal space. Okay. Um, next one is, okay, so planning, planning is key. Fuck, planning is key. You've got to be obsessed with planning. I, like, literally am obsessed with time. It's my OCD, okay? Um, and it probably comes from the Marines, you know, being adhering to timings, adhering to timings of, uh, you know, being specific on H hour when you start making an attack or you, uh, the, the line of departure where you've got to be somewhere, which is really important. So time, I used it in my head. I just used to think time, time, time. So planning is absolutely key. And having family blocks within your within your timetable or within your schedule, within your planning is vital because what you do is have these family blocks. So I'll give you an example. On Wednesday, between nine and half ten is always non-negotiable because me, the little lady and the partner, we always go for breakfast at Weatherspoons, always regardless, okay? It doesn't matter how busy I'm being, doesn't matter if there's people that make calls, I schedule it off of my calls, close my laptop, turn my phone off, and we go for breakfast. That is non-negotiable, okay? The first hour after school run, that's non-negotiable. I don't, like, I don't, I don't work. So anything that goes out is scheduled. So I pick the kids up, they come back, I spend the hour, um, and then that hour, we make sure that homework is done. We make sure that 
tasks are done, make sure that I've got quality time, make sure I just ask how their day is. Then they're usually into their fortnight and, and like whatever they're doing. All right, so that's a non-negotiable time block for me and the children. Um, but you must schedule your time. You must plan at the very start of the week. Um, you must plan into blocks. For those on the podcast, you can't quite see this, unfortunately. But this is a schedule of mine here. And what I end up doing is you can see my little blocks that I have here. So I have blocks for work. I have blocks where I go on social media. I have blocks for fitness. I have blocks for family. Family time. And that means as soon as you put it in a diary, it becomes a priority. If you stick it in your head, okay, all that ends up happening. All that ends up happening is you end up going into those pads habits of getting down the rabbit, going down the rabbit hole of, um, oh, I'm just going to get this done. I'm just going to do this extra work. I'm just going to try and push this to, you know, you've lost your focus on what's important back at home. And that is the kids, right? Now, during the day, so a lot of the time if my partner's out working and she's um, she's doing her bits and pieces that she does, I will be at home, okay, and I will have to work off my laptop. Now, I've got Albert, so my little two-year-old who's in the house. Um, I will go and sit in the front room on a sofa and do my work on the laptop. I still engage with her, okay. I still, every now and then, will stop and just go and play with her. But you mustn't feel guilty about actually having to do the work when you need to do the work, okay, and the kids are running around, okay, you, if you're dedicating your family slots to, to, to the kids, <clears throat> if you dedicate and you, if you're having your cut off point and you're finishing on time, if you're understanding you've got your priorities right, you know, you are spending your time with the kids, okay, but when you have to work, you do have to work, and if it's at home, you, you do have to, you do have to do it, so I see little Alba running around, she's playing with Peppa Pig, she's watching Peppa, watching Peppa Pig, but when she comes to talk to me, I will talk to her. I'll put my laptop down and talk to her. But don't feel guilty. You know, I kind of plan ahead. I know when my partner's going to be working. So I just think, right, I'm going to do some work that doesn't need my full attention. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't need absolute, like, quiet in a room, silence. I would just end up maybe reading some content, planning some content, um, looking at structure of any programs that I've got coming up. So things that I can manage as well as being daddy daycare. All right, those two, those two go alongside each other. It would be mental of me to do a, a major task whilst trying to look after her because then I just really would not be able to concentrate. So don't put yourself in a position where you're going to be stressed out and trying to complete a task, but also don't be guilty that you, are, you still do have to work. Um, okay, and <laughs> embrace the mixed responsibility. That kind of links really nicely in. You know... A lot, half the week, I'd say that I am daddy daycare. I'm a house husband half of the week, all right? Even though I think that I'm a full-time businessman, I actually mix the two up quite nicely because my partner still has to work. She's building her career. Um, she goes out and does her stuff. I'm very fortunate that I can run my business off my phone and my computer. Um, so embrace the fact that you are going to be a dad and you are going to be changing nappies during the day and you're going to be making them lunch and as well as you lunch and, you know, everything else that's going to be going on as a father and a businessman. Combine the two. I used to get quite hepped up, you know, back in the day. I'd be like, oh, God, Jemima's working. Um, God, I've got, to, um, I've got to work, but I've got to look after a little one. Just embrace it and roll with it, Okay. I, I, that's all I can say really is just embrace the dad, the, the, the dad responsibilities as well as being the entrepreneur. Don't lose your rag about it. That's, it is what it is. Um, and the last one, which is very, very key to me because I wrote a blog on it yesterday. Remember why you went into business. Okay. <clears throat> now, a part of that reason will be to be living on your own terms. The reason I went into business for myself was because I wanted to build up a life on my own terms. After six years, I'm sure I could have done it a lot quicker if I picked up the mentors I did <coughs> um, earlier. After six years, I'm now in a position where I live to my rules, my life, how I want to live. And the most important reason I did the dad's coach was so that I could have time. Time with my little ones, time with my big ones, time with my children. So I went actually into business to have more time with them. So it would be crazy for me to spend more time in the office, not doing 
what not not spending time with those guys, not having my cut off period, not realis- realizing what my priorities are. Okay, embracing the mixed um, uh, role of being a, a dad and a, and a house, house husband and an entrepreneur and mixing it up. You know, that's why I'm so grateful and lucky, the fact that I get to be here, seeing my little one as well as working. You know, I get to do what I want. I get to live, work when I want, not work when I want, take a weekend away with the family if I needed to. You know, and I just, some of these tips are really just, they are simple, but sometimes they're just a reminder. They are just a reminder sometimes about the things that are important, the purpose that we have in life, the reason we go into business, trying to get the combination right between the two. You know, some of you might not be in a position that I'm in. Some of you might be running multi-million pound companies, but you know, if you're running a multi-million pound company, surely you've got the opportunity to step back and actually spend more time with your children. You know, it's it's really important to, to get the balance right. If you're in the office 24 seven, you're on your computer 24 seven, you're striving to build this business, but at the sacrifice of your children, you know, is it all worth it in the end? because um, all you go to the grave with are your memories. You don't take all that cash with you and then book yourself into a nice hotel wherever's next. Okay, so just remember that. Listen, I hope this guide helps. If you're on Facebook, please do share. If you're on the podcast, please do review. I'd massively appreciate it. Have a cracking weekend.